Dear listener, this episode was recorded during the Writers Guild of America and SAG After Strike of 2023. While this podcast is a labor of love, shows like our Dear Babylon 5 should not be. We believe that the creators of artwork like our favorite shows deserve to be fairly compensated for their work. Without their labor, shows like ours would not exist, and Jafar and I wouldn't have become friends. We stand with labor. Welcome to Who Are You, a Babylon 5 watch cast by a couple of strangers, now friends, who are continuing to get to know each other over one of their favorite shows from their childhood. I'm Laura. And I'm Jafar. And today I want to ask Jafar, how was San Diego Comic Con? Oh my God. I don't know why I paused for a drop like we have one for San Diego Comic Con. No, <laughs> we don't. It's pause uh, for effect. Oh, I can do one of those. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> I know you know my video didn't freeze because like there's lights on my headset that move which just yeah, makes true. that even yeah. better the visual gag of course does nothing for our listeners but what might do something for our listeners is hearing about my experience at San Diego Comic Con which was a blast so first off I have to give a shout out to the Question Gentleman which is the board game company that paid for my trip yeah this is my college roommate, and one of his friends started a board game company. When this episode airs, their board game is still live on Kickstarter for like another two or three days. Okay. So I will give them the plug that they deserve for having, you know, they, they paid for my trip. Yeah, like, sure. So what is the know, game? It's called Pocket Samurai. It is a two-player drafting and dueling game that takes about 10 minutes. Oh. I did about... 500 demos of this game over the course of the weekend. Wow. And also, if you go watch their How to Play video, I am the voiceover on it. Fantastic. Uh, Look at our voiceover also, artist, everybody. You can see my hands. I'm a hand model in it. They're smooth, creamy, delicate, yet masculine. And then that was all put together by my lovely partner, Beth, mm -hmm. uh, who did a fantastic job editing and filming and setting up a lighting rig and all the, the incredible stuff that goes into a actual video production there. Yeah. So it's a real quick game. The target audience is kind of, you're waiting for your next round at Friday Night Magic, or you're waiting for the rest of your friends to show up for D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have played it at the bar, waiting for one of my other buddies from high school to show up when I was meeting two of them. Fun. It's real convenient. It's a 27 set of de cards. So it's like very small, fits okay. in your pocket. And you can just kind of whip it out and play it anywhere. Yeah, that's it's about a half a deck, take. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to retake that. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And so you can just, you know, take it out of your pocket and play it anywhere. That sounds worse somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take it out of your pants whenever you want and play with it in front of people. God and damn. It's not even weird at all. <laughs> This is all staying in now, isn't it? Yeah, all right. I think so, yeah. no, It's a travel size game that's just kind of meant to be super convenient, and you don't know when you're going to have 15 minutes, or you don't know how much time you have, and you just know it's going to be short. So the, it's really fun, though. It's uh, very strategic. It's uh, very rock, paper, scissories, but at a drafting level, so you kind of countering stuff. It's a lot of fun, and I do actually enjoy the game, mm -hmm. despite having played it for 13 hours a day for several <laughs> days in a row for the con. <laughs> That's the real test, I think. Yeah. It it wasn't bored and it didn't break. I haven't been able to thoroughly break it. There's okay. definitely some combos I've found that are strong, but they are counterable in the draft phase before they become a problem in the gameplay phase. Especially if you know what you're doing. Okay. Uh, which and I would say it only takes people like four games to get to like past beginner level play. It tends to click pretty quickly. It's a That's very good. simple game. So that's their plug. Thank you, Questing Gentlemen. Thank you, Pocket Samurai, for giving me an all-expense-paid trip to San Diego to mm -hmm. go see the road home. 
Yes, that's what Which, the listener is mostly here for. Tell I know. Us. Let, this is why people are hitting their skips and maybe missing. I don't know. I'm one of those guys. I skip ads all the time, so I ain't yeah. gonna, I ain't gonna <laughs> judge no one for it. But uh, yeah, the road home. I got to do the premiere. I sat through three other panels to make sure I had a good seat. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I did. I sat. Uh, I think ended up sitting sixth row, maybe fourth row center. Right in front of the great maker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, saw the movie. I have rated it on the Discord. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say too much. This episode airs the day after it comes out. So yeah. I'm going to assume most of our listenership hasn't had a chance to watch it. I will say if it's something that you're curious about, but you are watching the show along with us and want to avoid spoilers. It is firmly post season five. Yeah. It, it it takes place without getting into details about too much in between the second to last episode and the last episode in mm-hmm. season five. Yeah. <laughs> but the last episode is a time jump, as right. we all know. So that's part of the reason why. It's it's about a year after the events of season five the game the, the movie takes place. Okay. Um, so I think that puts it pre-Crusade, but I should have researched that before making that statement. That's fine. Um, it's but fine. definitely a year after season five. Now like tell, they, they tell me. They set that t- timeline. Obviously, there's a lot of recasted voices because yes. we have lost a lot of our dear actors. Uh, how does that work? Does it does it fit Real nicely? Good. Yeah. Okay. I would say out of all the recast actors, the strongest was probably Phil Lamar as Dr. Franklin. Wow. Okay. He's an accomplished voice actor, so that makes sense. Yes. He just really gets the cadence and the feel of Franklin while still doing his own thing. Okay. And none of the actors, no one felt like a clone of the the person who came before, mm-hmm. but there was definitely enough in intonation and like speech patterns. And maybe that some of that's JMS's writing as well. I'm sure. But I would be shocked if I found out any of them didn't do their homework for the role. Mm-hmm. So I think they all brought the, their A-game, and they all sounded great. How's the um, visual quality? Good. If you want the closest comparison, this is from the mouth of the director during the Q&A at the, after the movie. Uh, he also did DC's Super Sons. Okay. Uh, where it's 2D in front with 3D rendered backgrounds. And it's the same. So they were like, we want to do this exact same style again. And they did. I haven't seen Super Sons, but that's what he said. And he made both movies, so I trust him on that opinion. He seems like the authority. Yeah. I will say it was super cool because we get to see, like, a lot of detail that we missed in the show's CGI. Like, there is a shadow ship that is, like, one of the big ones that's a carrier. Okay. And we get to, like, see in detail all of the, like, buildings on it and stuff that are just kind of amorphous black blobs. When we see it in space normally. That sounds and cool. And got to see some like life on it and got to see like where the little drone ships fly out of and things. Uh-huh. We got to see a lot more detailed versions of a lot of the locales on Babylon 5 itself. Ooh. When the hallways aren't restricted to being TNG size to fit in a warehouse. Yeah. They get to do a lot more room with stuff. The Zocalo felt massive yeah. in comparison. So that was all really cool. I have seen one review of it so far, and I almost entirely agree with it. Okay. I don't want to voice too much, especially because I know you haven't had a chance to see it yet. Right, yeah. So, but it was enjoyable. Uh, I am not typically one for the nostalgia pop, the cheap nostalgia pop. Uh And there was admittedly a lot of that in this movie. It was very much a, we haven't done Babylon 5 in 20 years, so we're doing Babylon 5 again kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Uh, the review that I watched online of it said it pretty succinctly, though. Out of everything we've gotten since Sleeping in Light, it is the thing that has most felt like a JMS episode of Babylon 5. Oh, good. And yeah. that is 100% true. M- much more so than any of the post movies or Crusade or any of it, it felt like watching an episode of Babylon 5. Well, two episodes of Babylon 5 stuck together. Great, great. Um, So I rated it a three and a half on the Discord. Okay. That is, uh, that was like my initial thought walking out of it. 
my my grumbles with it are still my grumbles with it, but I don't think they take away from it at all. Okay. It's very reliant on the one-liner style of humor that JMS had and during his Babylon 5 days. Mm-hmm. But if you read any of his comics, especially in the last 10 years or so, especially his run on Spider-Man, which is a very one-linery superhero, yeah, uh, it felt more like a comic to me than an acted piece because of the 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 one liner exchange is real heavy mm-hmm. and the the monologue is seldom and that's kind of the reverse of how TV works normally especially a show mm-hmm. like Babylon 5 so that's my biggest gripe without getting into details okay um okay. and then the ending is just going to blow your mind i i can't even like the fact that i haven't seen anyone ruin the ending of this thing is shocking. Wow. Because it was the thing I wanted to talk about the most. And I haunted Twitter for like an hour after the movie was <laughs> over. And I didn't see it ruined there. Wow. I didn't see it ruined in the review I read. I haven't seen it ruined in tweets or people asking about it afterwards mm-hmm. or anything. So, yeah. Well, after it comes out, that's our next open is we'll talk about the ending. Yeah, we'll Get talk about the movie chest. for sure. Yeah. We'll do, I think... I did a like look at our episode placement for it, and I did put it towards the end. Uh-huh. I think we'll actually do it as an episode of our show, probably just after season five, before we get into the other stuff. Okay. We had kind of so, but we'll talk about that more later. For sure. I have a planned roadmap for basically everything post season five written out for us, and you've seen it. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's in our shared drive that we use as a workspace for the podcast but we'll go over all of that in the season four finale because it seems like an appropriate place to talk about the future so i think so one last question of course did you ask any questions of the great maker i did i did ask jms a question i got up in line i sat right next to the microphone so i could get up in line very quickly very smart i had like the second question and i asked him my question and I'm going to tell you right now, he did not have an answer for me. <gasps> Gasp. Uh, so I got up and I'm like, hi, thanks for Babylon 5, et cetera, et cetera. Community, mm-hmm. important part of my life. Really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the usual things. Um, right. And then I'm like, one of the th- through lines of your career as a writer is not wanting to do the same thing over again. You go out of your way. You avoid it to not tell the same story twice. Mm-hmm. With that in mind, knowing the nature of this movie of going through time was there anything that you thought about revisiting and decided you couldn't because you did it right the first time and you didn't want to touch it and he did not have an answer and he did not have an answer for me he's just like nope there was nothing no sacred cows bye (laughs) (laughs) okay i mean yeah that's that's a strong strong answer i guess yeah yeah i mean hey I thought it was a good question, but apparently (laughs) it isn't. Uh, That's fine, though. But yeah, that was cool. And I did hit up the autograph session as well. And I got a copy of Becoming Superman signed. Yeah. And I also got my VHS copy of The Gathering signed. Oh, nice. (laughs) Yeah. What a nice blast from the past for him <laughs> it is on a display stand in my living room now where it will Very live nice. well i am so glad you had a great time i'm glad you got to be there i'm glad one of us could you know yeah i am so shocked it all happened <laughs> it still doesn't <laughs> feel real to me that's amazing i'm just so happy for you and you're about to have another amazing week so yeah just live yep. it up about to head off to star trek las vegas send me so many pictures <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I it'll just be on Facebook probably. I've, I posted yeah, a ton of fun. pictures from San Diego Comic Con on my Facebook, which doesn't help anyone on our Discord. I should probably post some pictures on our Discord. Yeah, I think. pick the choicest ones for the Discord. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. And then yeah, STLV and the Pranica Cabanica. I'm gonna go have a drink with uh, Adam from last episode. Well, yeah, while buy him a drink for me. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. We'll- can make sure that happens. Yeah, please do. All right. Well, it's a shame you don't get to go. 
uh, to the Pranica Cabanica as well. Not that mm-hmm. you'd have any conflicts of interest if you did. <laughs> there you go. That is the worst segue. No, it's no, fine. I've had worse. I've had. Yeah, worse. we've done worse. <laughs> <laughs> the bar is pretty low on the show. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we've got season four, episode twelve, conflicts of interest. Uh, we open on Garibaldi reuniting a father and daughter at a discount as Wade watches on. I don't think we got this character's name last episode. No, he was just uh, Depeche Mode. Yeah. To us, yeah. Yeah. He was, you know, so uh, I have to give a shout out because with the name Wade actually has a little bit of significance to me. Oh. I have a reoccurring character in, oh, I've got only two reoccurring characters in all of my D&D games. Oh, I see. And they are the brothers Wade and Chillin's McMagic Shop. <laughs> and they are the proprietors of a interdimensional magic stop magic item shop chain. Nice. The McMagic shops. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to Wade. <laughs> yeah, this Wade doesn't seem that cool. No. Morrissey quickly tells us that Garibaldi is expendable to main theme here. Yeah. We come back to Zach coming to Sheridan's office, who is just standing in darkness. Yeah. Is he staring out a window or is he staring at a painting? Do we know what this is? It, he's staring. The human being, Bruce, is staring at a painting. But <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He's staring out a window. <laughs> I, I thought I was like, this is either a window or a very boring painting. Like, but it could be either. <laughs> yeah, it's out to the Zen gardens and stuff. Uh, yeah, we see okay. it in the background when uh, Kosh saves him. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Sheridan has some very legitimate gripes, I think. Yes. <laughs> he uh, wants Zach to go and visit Garibaldi and take his stuff back. We don't know how long Garibaldi's been running around with his security access. Right. And his gun. <laughs> this is shocking. This is shocking. Like, I would love to hear from IT security Jaffer this episode. <laughs> oh, my God. You have to disable that AD account, like, immediately. What is going on? Yeah. Just unauthorized access to the environment. I was. This is mind-numbing to me. <laughs> and, and the fact that we have to physically take the card back instead of remotely turning it off from our end is just bonkers. And he does remotely turn it off halfway through the episode. Oh, man, he did. That's right. <laughs> Why don't you just do that the first time? <laughs> just look him up, search user, right click, disable account. It ain't hard. I doubt the future is going to make it much worse. Yeah. <laughs> Zach has way too many emotions wrapped up in this, too. Like, he's so uncomfortable with going to his former boss and asking mm-hmm. for a very legitimate thing that he needs. Like, I, I don't <sighs> understand. Like, I guess Zach was also raised on Garibaldi's homeschool security force, but... Yes, a fellow uh, graduate. Yeah. I just was like, this is not how your security people should feel about taking access away from anyone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. even their former boss for sure sheridan's right he's like he knows the regulations he's had to do Mm -hmm. this like this Mm -hmm. should not be a problem sheridan also here should not feel the way he feels when alan asks why is this a rush and Mm -hmm. sheridan doesn't have to give him an answer (laughs) it's just because it's termed for a month (laughs) yeah he's he's no longer with us and this is how it goes yeah you don't have to say, I don't like his company. Like, you're the commander of the station, sir. Do you think the only reason this happens is because they're not Earth Force? Like, Earth Force would have automatically termed when the paycheck stopped. Like, you surely, know, yeah. Turned off everything. <laughs> Badge and gun on the desk. <laughs> We've let our internal controls slip because we're not part of the larger organization anymore. Is that mm-hmm. it? Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. so. Maybe some of that Earth Force admin cost was worth the worth the money. Speaking of admin cost, Ivanova's raking her brain trying to figure out how to get the signal out from Babylon Five as Franklin comes in back from Mars. Yeah, he just came back. He didn't get to see any more of that. That was kind he of a really, shame. Yeah, he really downplays 
his experience here and he's uh-huh. a professional. Thank fuck. Yeah. This is like the first time we get a nice glimpse of professional Franklin again. Right? It's been so long. <laughs> How was Mars? Great. Had a ton of sex, finger guns. <laughs> not not completely out of the question. Right. Right. <laughs> Mr. Sleeps with Patience, yeah. Right? Oh, sorry. Doctor Sleeps with Patience. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they have their conversation and Ivanova totally thinks of co-opting Epsilon 3 she has this brilliant idea she totally came up with it and mm-hmm. definitely nobody else yeah definitely probably not <laughs> I'm not going to argue with her oh no <laughs> heaven <laughs> forbid <laughs> after this Zach goes to Alfredo gets his identical card in com badge easy but the gun is a point of contention Come and take it, he says, standing on his lawn in St. Louis, holding an AR-15, completely missing the point. (laughs) That's not going to be a dated reference at all, ever. (laughs) It's already a dated reference, and I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Google it, guys. (laughs) If you're listening to this in the future. (laughs) Google it now. (laughs) If you don't remember, I don't blame you. Yeah, that's true. A lot's happened. It's been a crazy three years. It has. Yeah, this is wild that he thinks he can just keep his government gun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also wild that we can't also just shut down the gun. Like, we've you we've established think. on this show that maybe they're, like, fingerprint locked or something. Mm-hmm. Like, there should be a remote shut off, too. I don't know. but That makes sense to me. Not only is it the one gun, there's a second gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach knows. Mm-hmm. The worst part of this is after he gives them over, he gives Zach shit for doing it personally rather than sending a rando. See, this is the type of person that Garibaldi is that I totally believe that if it had been a rando, he would have gone to Zach and been like, why didn't you come do this yourself? Exactly. There's no 100%. winning. Yeah. He has to have a reason to complain. Yeah. There's no right way to do this with this type of person. Ugh. Yeah. What a snowflake. He's so easily offended. (laughs) Indeed. (laughs) Indeed. Ivanova heads down to the planet as Garibaldi watches the Looney Tunes episode where Bugs is the animator and uh, is basically God coming down and making Daffy's life miserable. Mm Mm-hmm. Not a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the Usenets, there's an, a note about really fighting to get this specific clip approved. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a classic, too. Like, I think mm-hmm. if you know a handful of Looney Tunes, this is one of them you, that you know, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It makes sense, though, because you could definitely see. I mean, Garibaldi clearly identifies as Daffy Duck already anyways. Right. <laughs> and so With the, the poster over where... his bed. Yeah, right. The episode where someone is playing God and tormenting him mm-hmm. definitely plays into his psyche. Hmm. What a victim mentality. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Just as dinner's ready and the cartoon finishes, a knock on the door asks him why he gives time to the people who don't care if he lives or dies. And Wade offers him a job, bodyguarding someone, doing some secret business on the station. And then he takes the job. Heaven knows he's miserable. It's a commercial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing that disappointed me about the uh, ride down to Epsilon 3 is the lack of fancy flying. Nobody's, dri- nobody's driving like a madman down there. Yeah. Apparently, you can just drive down there, is what we're learning. And Alondo was doing fancy flying for no reason <laughs> other than showboating. Well, I think he was being shot at, too. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's too bad. We know Ivanova has got fancy flying in her, right? Ivanova runs into Zathras, thinking that it's Zathras, but she's never met Zathras. Yeah. She's met Zathras, not Zathras. Right. It's very subtle. Uh, yeah. Zathras, not Zathras. Yeah. My favorite Zathras line of all time is right here, which is Zathras never listened to Zathras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Laura never listens to Laura either. 
<laughs> Comedy gold. And I will mm-hmm. say, because it's announced Sathras is in Road Home. Yeah. Yeah, he was in the trailer. I think it's fair. Oh, to... it's it's good. Okay. <laughs> That's a recast actor, isn't it? Yes. Tim, Timothy's dead. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, that's one you have to do the homework if you're going to nail it. So yeah. I'm sure they did. Yeah. The Zathrai aplenty. Yay. <laughs> Garibaldi takes the back door through Space TSA to find Elise and a flashback waiting for him. <laughs> These flashbacks get me every time. <laughs> I mean, you could tell that they were recorded at the right time because his hair is in the right kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. It'd be a big makeup job to have him have that hair right now. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to have a, like an expert wig maker, right? <laughs> oh, there's so much scalp. It'd be, it'd be insane. Yeah. It'd yeah. have to be the most specific wig in history. <laughs> yes. Our <Hard> degree. <laughs> but yeah, he's still got those feels. They come back in a flashback. Mm-hmm. After commercial, Lise catches Mike up on the last few years. And she says he was finally happy, so she didn't want to ruin that for him. Uh, Fucking win. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting interpretation. I mean. (laughs) I did the homework on this. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So the last time they talked, right, when she was in the hospital and stuff, was late season one. So in a couple episodes, Mm -hmm. he gets shot in the back, goes through the recovery, Mm -hmm. splits Mm -hmm. from Earth. Shadow War starts. Yeah. All the Shadow War shit. At what point during any of this is he happy? Well, she saw him before all that. So I guess if she didn't talk to him in between, she could be a little forgiven, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, Garibaldi is not a character on the show that I would describe as happy. But yeah. uh, he is really unreasonable here. Oh, for sure. He's a real shitbag. Yeah, he's like, she's he's not so... great, but he is fucking miserable. Yes. And he's the kind of person that he wants to badger her. But the second it doesn't go the way he wants, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Mm-hmm. And he's like, this is over. And it's like, OK, <laughs> right. I have definitely had this conversation with a certain type of man. And uh, Ugh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're, they're, they're everywhere. Jafar, did you know? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah. They they could be at your workplace. They I'm sure be... they are. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. These type of guys are everywhere. I've got no idea, apparently. I, I mean, I believe you. <laughs> I'm just privileged. He's a real piece of work. And as, uh, the other thing that I really dislike about this conversation is him badgering her that she has the audacity to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Fuck off, dude. Like, she she tells him that her marriage that she was in when she talked to him at the end of season one fell apart. That man had an affair and took her daughter mm-hmm. away from her because the courts are apparently biased towards Earthborn citizens. Yeah. And, you know, she met another man and had the gall to just try to be happy again. And, uh, Garibaldi puts it together that this man that she's with is very, very rich, filthy rich, and immediately goes for the gold digger jab. Fucking. <laughs> Just how hard is it to be happy for your ex? Like, yeah. like truly, like, you know, she didn't do anything terrible to you. You know, she didn't cheat on you or do something so uncouth that you can't stand the sight of her like Mm -hmm. she just didn't want to move that's why she didn't go with garibaldi yeah she didn't want to uproot her entire fucking life Mm -hmm. that's that's her crime against you and you're gonna be this rude to her yeah come on just let people be happy who fucking doesn't deserve happiness like mitch mcconnell that's about it right (laughs) a couple other people anyone anyone actively committing genocide Right, right. Everyone else, though. She just literally didn't oh, want to move. Okay, she didn't want to go be in a tin can. I don't deserve to be happy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much to list, but the average decent person deserves to be happy. It just, 
fucking let him. Yeah. So not a good look for Garibaldi. <sighs> Pretty much this whole episode, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I I will reiterate. He's a real shitbag. Yeah. Uh, but of note, Lise is now Lise Hampton Edgar's. So mm-hmm. the man that she is married to is William Edgar's, which is apparently a magnate of some sort. Very famous, rich dude from th- pharmaceuticals. Big Pharma rep. Just, yeah. Just what we love, a, a hero from Big Pharma. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this is going to go all fugitive on us. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and Adam will never know. They were together for six months and they got married. How long have they been married is my question. Because if That's it's a like question. a month and he's sending her to do business deals for her like on rebel stations, I have more questions. <laughs> the time frame here is a little confusing. But I think if the divorce and the cheating and the baby happens all very quickly after, after see, yeah. we last uh-huh. year, she was already pregnant in that. Yeah. Yeah. Then we can kind of wiggle almost a year of them being married into uh-huh. it by just kind of pushing things and really they like she they met immediately. They got married after six months. We could make it like a year where okay. There is there there is a reality where this isn't super awkward or trying to off her for some reason. Because yeah. that was the vibe I got is all like <laughs> if they've been married for like a couple months and he's sending her to what is regarded as one of the most dangerous places. Right. Did he Did just he take, take out, out a big huge life, insurance? life insurance policy? <laughs> Damn it, we went for the same joke at the same time. It's the right <laughs> joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he became so wealthy. He's just marrying women and sending them into dangerous situations after he gets their life insurance policy established. <laughs> right. It's a good investment. <laughs> oh. Over in Sheridan's office, he's talking to Londo as Jakar comes in. And they were both invited to discuss shared borders and the repurposing of the rangers. The ambassadors agreed that this could be seen as an act of aggression. And he's hoping that if the Centauri and Narn can both publicly agree to the same thing, it will Mm. dismiss any fears of such in the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. Yeah. Smart play. Smart. Hard to do. They both owe him. Yeah. I noticed that Jakar does not sit down in this scene. Yeah. He will not sit at the same table with Mr. Malari. Nope. Shocker. Too soon. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But yeah, Londo puts up a little resistance here. He's uh not super convinced about the drock, it feels like. Yeah. And uh a he's a little tale. reluctant to, to yeah. take this offer. Well, back in security, Mr. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> He's going through the uh, the daily rundown from the security computer, finding about all the crimes, and it notes that there was an unauthorized entry into an area. There's yeah. a missing passenger from a shuttle that came in, and Mr. Garibaldi was somewhere he shouldn't have been. Yeah. And somehow he made a copy of his identity card. <laughs> He's probably got the like the badge machine in his office. Yeah. You yeah. know, that checks out. Just printed a second badge. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now, finally, Mr. Allen decides to uh, override that clearance that Mr. Garibaldi had. It only took him half the episode. Yep. So here's the thought. All right. If this physical security, this identity card, is the way we get in and out of places, and we finally mm-hmm. took it back from Mr. Garibaldi... Could somebody just go to like the loose bin of identity cards, you know, that's sitting around <laughs> in the office and just pick one up and go and get into Garibaldi's places with his card because we didn't shut it off? Oh, God. Zach is. <laughs> I hope he like I hope this is a one time thing and not a consistent fuck up for him because <laughs> I have seen. I have seen people get fired for less when it comes yeah. to security stuff like this. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Garibaldi and crew uh, meet and get the package. It is an antigen for a virus that only impacts telepaths. Mm. And they go into so much detail for a big secret. <laughs> 
They're like, let me tell you about our super specific MacGuffin. Oh, it's so secret. We can't tell anyone. If anyone were to find out all of the details I'm about to tell you in an open bar, it would be just a public execution. Oh, it'd be terrible. The people that want this thing, if they knew that it was right here, this exact specific thing that these exact groups of people want. Uh So dumb. So fucking dumb. Yeah. And where is this thing coming from? Is that clear at any point? Off world is the okay. only answer we get. Quote, the boys back home couldn't figure it out. So do the boys back home have it? Or, or well, is it, has it already, it. maybe has, has the virus like gotten into the population or anything? We find out more later. Later. Okay. I will not say anything else lest I ruin <laughs> twists coming down the line i love your restraint congratulations it's it's difficult (laughs) (laughs) yeah so this comes from off world somewhere yeah i don't remember if we find out exactly where if they don't if they tell us like oh the vorlons did it or something i i have guesses knowing a couple little bits more information Mm -hmm. and i mean if you think about (laughs) Who Jafar's re- dancing in his seat, everybody. He's, <laughs> it's, he's it's trying my restraint. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is the physical signs of my restraint. <laughs> I I will lead you down a rabbit hole of information you already know, listener. If you think about who would who would want to get rid of telepaths, but maybe yeah. not all telepaths in the show's yeah. history. There's okay. a couple of answers, and some of them might have recently been removed from the galactic table, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the timing of this is a little coincidental for that, one might even say. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. if I had to wager, right, with what I know at the current juncture. But they put this thing in like a block of resin. Yeah. <laughs> and we get we get a bunch of stuff about, oh, there's a molecular code you have to know to open it. Yeah, no. I could I could make one of these in 10 minutes with a resin pour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Couple Speaking of, of which, there's a whole set of YouTube channels of people encasing shit in resin that shouldn't be encased in resin and then just time lapse of what happens. <laughs> like, I've seen whole pumpkins encased in resin and shit. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it lasts longer than you'd think, but well, not yeah, as long as you'd hope. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I love how YouTube became just this thing where we were like, Let's do this stupid thing that no one would ever do because you're going to ruin your stuff. There, there's but whole channel. We channels. can do it and get Will people to blend? watch it. Will it yes. microwave? Yeah, exactly, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the things in the bar don't go super great. No. No, gunfire starts a blazing. He grabs a PPG and returns fire uh, and... Garibaldi finds out his old codes are now no good. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. He gets Leeson Wade into the air vents before getting his own McLean moment as they blast through the blast doors. They peek in, make eye contact, and Garibaldi realizes their plan and just barely saves Leese and Morrissey. He reminds Wade that he shouldn't say that he goes about things the wrong way when they pop out of the vents not at docking bay three as he had insisted they think about mm-hmm. yeah all part of the plan yeah he he had the feeling when he had this person staring at him up in the vents that these people were not just normal people nope not mundane no it's fucking john edwards in here reading his mind yep yep so he he did the old misdirect Got the uh, terrified lady to think about Docking Bay 3 over and over again (laughs) and sent those telepaths somewhere else. He he doesn't have his link anymore. I thought it was funny, by the way. I forgot to mention this when we were in that scene and all his stuff was being taken away, that he always hated his link, Mm -hmm. but it was still on his wrist. (laughs) (laughs) Like, he kept that shit on even though he hated it and he didn't need it anymore. (laughs) It's like a cell phone, right? It's just like his government. It's his work phone. Yeah, yeah. Just get a private number. Yeah, but he doesn't have that anymore, so he manages to flag down a security person. 
mm-hmm. and uh, sends them to Docking Bay 3 where they're going to find a nice surprise. Yeah. And he, he does warn Zack. He says, tell Zack that these people have killed people. Yep. He sends Lise and Morrissey on their way, but he has to go stand on his own. He has to leave on his own. And he makes his way to Bay 3. Yeah, at least he goes for backup. That's nice. Yeah. Well, they do everything, too. He shows up late because the goons show up and get ambushed. And they suicide pill themselves just, like, instantly. Just, like, for the future. (laughs) Yeah. Done. The old tooth suicide pill. Yeah. Don't know what these telepaths are up to. Very Mm -hmm. interesting. Very mysterious. I do like a little mystery from my Babylon 5. Well, it's a good season for that. Yeah. In Sheridan's office, he's reading down Garibaldi for the pile of bodies, who returns it by saying if he had just kept his military issue weaponry and the key to every lock, maybe people wouldn't have died. Uh huh. And, and then he has the nerve to say he hasn't done anything illegal, like right. firing g- a gun in a public place on a space station, a uh-huh. pressurized environment, like destroying doors and air ducts. In a pressurized environment, (laughs) you know. Unauthorized access into special areas of a space station. Sneaking someone on the station, literal human trafficking. (laughs) Right. But Sheridan comes up with trespassing and unauthorized use of an ID. Like, he hasn't done these terrible things. At best, vigilantism. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, and then he threatens him that uh, (laughs) if there's any more like this, he'll take away his business license. (laughs) I'm sure that means so much. The tax purposes. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) Revoke his business license over these things he probably should be in jail for. (laughs) Oh. Oh, to be a white man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, you're right. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyways he gets a message from lease before the shower which he's just all like not interested delete mm-hmm. rude god forbid she say thank you or it was nice to see you or anything a decent human being might do you shit bag right i don't i wish i had a better word i don't yeah. i'm not a thesaurus i'm sorry Yeah, he won't talk to her, but the next morning when he gets a new message and it's her husband, he'll take the call. Ugh. God, just a bat made of misogyny just hitting me in the head. (laughs) Yeah, rich husband is very happy to have his wife safely home, and he's impressed with Mr. Garibaldi's work. Mm Mm-hmm. He offers him a job on Mars. Get your ass to Mars. So Mm -hmm. he's... Gonna skip town, getting off the B5. That's not exactly a homecoming. I don't think he's originally from Mars. I think we had some lip service to like Boston or something earlier in the series, but he has certainly lived on Mars. That's where they met after all. And Mm -hmm. so he's decided that there's nothing keeping him on the station, like his security access he wasn't even supposed to have anymore. Yeah. (laughs) And then uh, we get Ivanova, the voice of the resistance broadcast hits. The truth is back in business, baby. Mm-hmm. I love their little background where they've got like the bar through President Clark's face <laughs> on their little testing screen. I don't know if you caught that, but. <laughs> boo Clark. <laughs> now, no, they're saying boo urns, boo urns. Extremely mature here on Babylon 5. <laughs> Yeah, the truth is back in business to theme. All right. Well, that's our episode, Laura, I have to ask. On a scale of Babylon's one to five, where do you put this one? So I like this episode on the podcast level and that it's fun to make fun of it. Yes. (laughs) I must say that. But for me, this is not an average episode of Babylon 5. This is down there in the two territory. Because there are such gaping holes around that security access. I think it's not unreasonable in the 90s for these things to have bothered the audience. That we didn't even take away the keys 
when he mm-hmm. quit. That's right? basically it's absurd to me. And the gun, the gun, the thing that kills people. <laughs> it's we didn't take it back. And it's not even like I mean, obviously, killing a person is a bad use of a gun. Right. But on a space station, uh huh, <laughs> you can depressurize a whole chunk. You can you can kill many many people very very quickly. Mm-hmm. It is a real problem to have a projectile weapon on a space station. Right, right. I just read a book that made a whole point of it, actually. Oh, really? Oh, I, oh you, you'd love this book. It's a great book. It's called A Memory Called Empire. Oh, I've heard of it, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. And the main character is an ambassador from a space station to this big galactic empire. Okay. And there's a point where uh, a projectile weapon is used, and she's just aghast because they're basically outlawed at every level there because yeah. it's a fucking space station <laughs> right go figure <laughs> yeah so i i gotta get this episode a two because it's a little bit holy for me yeah uh, what yeah. about you jafer i i was gonna give it a two and a half and i don't even know why <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's not terrible. We get professional Franklin, which is nice. Yeah. But Garibaldi is just an asshole the whole entire time. Yes. Uh, we the a bit with Ivanova and Sathras. There we go. We needed more of that though. We, we get did. one scene of Ivanova and Zathras, and then she's headed home. And it's like, come on. Give me more Zathras. It's Zathris. our boy. It's our boy Zathras. Right. You, you, JMS, I know you're listening. I know you're not listening, actually. But <laughs> more Zathras, right? You've got the assets. You've got the voice actor now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's animation. How hard can it be to, you know, obviously strike notwithstanding and everything else, all the all the decent sure. reasons you have to not do it immediately. But once once those are resolved, ideally, knock on wood in a positive manner, just pump out like 20 Zathras shorts. It can't be that difficult. Yeah. <laughs> all the one-liners just stack them up i i need to do a super cut from road home of all the zathras one-liners you guys yeah. don't even know yeah Real soon. we'll start a youtube channel just for that <laughs> <laughs> all right well next week we've got season four episode 13 rumors bargains and lies mm. Sheridan manipulates planetary leaders to band against ruthless raiders. Delenn works with her rival to stop a devastating civil war on Mimbar. Mmm. Getting heavy. Yeah. Again. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Just like I'm looking forward to Jeremy Siegel's July album, which should be dropping any day now for us. Hopefully, yeah. You can find more of Jeremy's work, like our theme song, at jeremysiegel42.bandcamp.com or on your favorite streaming service as Nuclear Jaguar. <laughs> that was completely <laughs> incomprehensible. It's Nuclear Jaguar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate your commitment to the bit to try to pronounce it a different way every time. I might have broke the marshmallow on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stretched it too far. Yeah, that's fine. And also thank you to Angry Duck Time Machine on Instagram for our podcast artwork. Hey, Aaron, thanks for editing our podcast. We really appreciate it. All the time you put in on making us sound like we don't stammer or through our sentences and have 500 mm-hmm. ums and making drops so that our jokes land better than we could possibly have with human comedic timing. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much. Very much. All right. And thank you to you, the listener, for being here with us. We appreciate you so much. We do. Community, thank you so much for joining us. If you're a new listener, we've seen a handful of you come in recently. Uh, Yay! We really appreciate you spending some time with us and talking about Babylon 5. Thank you so much. You can join us on our Discord. Uh, Mm -hmm. You can find the link to that on all of our socials. Uh, We are technically on X now. I don't think that's going to last. Twitter. I'm just going to call it Twitter because I refuse yeah. to call them Zeets. Ugh. <laughs> Ew, that feels gross. And then also on the Facebook where we'll probably be more active because we've been doing a lot of cross-posting with our friends at Dominion Media Television. So We love you. We do. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch you later, Internet. Bye. <laughs>